tidal inlets are among nature's most dynamic coastal environments, opening or closing when storms hit, sometimes migrating long distances down the barrier aisles. Of paramount importance, inlets are the links between the ocean and the rivers and sounds that flow down to them. They're key arteries to our estuaries, essential to all the marine, bird, and animal life that depend on these magnificent systems. Along our North Carolina coast, an average of 20 inlets connect inland waters and rivers to the Atlantic Ocean, ranging from a couple of deep navigation channels to many thin, shallow ribbons of water, at times too treacherous to venture in or out of. Through all of them, exchanging water, sediment, and marine life, the tides flood and ebb. Rich Inlet in southeastern North Carolina is one of our last completely natural inlets, never dredged, never engineered, never hardened. It is also one of our coast's most stable inlets, the central channel varying less than 800 yards over two centuries. Rich Inlet's tidal flats, 100 acres at Figure Eight Island's upper end, are one of our coast's most beautiful and special places a spot of pounding surf, unique birds wheeling about, and families out boating, fishing, birding, and simply walking the beach. Now a threat has come to this natural inlet, one that could destroy the very nature of the inlet system, its beauty, and its natural wonders. Some members of the Figure Eight Island Homeowners Association have proposed a terminal groin for Rich Inlet a 16,000 ton rock and sheet pile wall, well over a quarter mile long, that could cut in half this natural inlet complex, and at a cost that runs to millions of dollars in private money. For decades, we had in place a wise North Carolina law protecting our shorelines from such hardening. Only its recent repeal has made such an expensive, destructive proposition possible that it would forever change the balance between the ocean, sound, and the vast marshes behind the island is indisputable. So is the fact that it would deprive North Carolina residents and visitors the chance, the right, to experience the magnificent natural rich inlet. For you cannot walk upon a massive rock groin, and you boat anywhere near it only at your peril. My good friend Stan Riggs of East Carolina University is one of the most renowned marine geologists in our state. Stan Riggs has studied North Carolina's inlets and barrier islands, their formation, migration, and behavior for over 50 years, his entire career. His thoughts about the proposal to build a groin here draw upon his intimate knowledge of this natural inlet. Inlets are an incredibly important part of a barrier island estuarine coastal system. Their role in barrier islands is a, like a self-adjusting safety valve. These self-adjusting safety valves are crucial for building our barriers, for allowing, the, taking care of the storm waters, getting them in and getting them back out. And it's just as important that we get them back out. And if they can't get out, then you increase the impact to whatever human development we've got back there. And so locking them up with jetties of any kind or groin fields of any kind stops that breathing. If we want it 25, 50 years from now, we have to respect the dynamics and learn to live with those dynamics. Storms are, are island building and inlet building systems and the barriers need inlets they, and the inlets need storms. This is why they breathe. This is, this is what makes them living. You lock them up and you've, you've cut them off. Like Dr. Riggs, Walker Golder of the North Carolina Audubon Society has worked up and down the Carolina coast for many, many years crafting and guiding our state's water bird sanctuary program and earning the governor's award for wildlife conservationist of the year. He deeply understands the importance of keeping Rich Inlet 
in its natural state. We're really fortunate along the North Carolina coast to have a spectacular coastline. And the benefits of natural inlets and a natural coastline are many. They support the diverse and abundant bird life, sea life like sea turtles, fish, and they're just beautiful places aesthetically. When you have species who have evolved to take advantage of natural habitats like our beaches and our inlets, those species depend on those habitats for their very survival. Rich Inlet is a gem. It's a true treasure for us along the coast here because it's been left alone for the most part. When we have natural inlets and we have natural beaches, we have abundant wildlife, especially um, for those species who don't have other places to go. Today, our coast has changed. The habitats that they once depended on are gone in many places. And the birds have been pushed and pushed and pushed away from the habitats where they once thrived to a remnant of what they once found on the North Carolina coast. Terminal groins have a significant impact on inlets. First of all, when you put a rock structure on the end of a barrier island, you stabilize habitat that has historically been dynamic and is naturally dynamic. A terminal groin eliminates that. And when you eliminate the habitat that these birds depend on, you eliminate the birds. Fred Stanback has long been a leading North Carolinian in environmental education, protection, and stewardship. And he and his wife Alice, for their great efforts, received the North Carolina Award for Public Service. Their family has had homes on Figure Eight Island for years, and they love what Rich Inlet and the surrounding natural habitats provide them and indeed all North Carolinians. My family and other relatives have been coming to Figure Eight for many years. I bought a house on the beach and we enjoy being here and liking the island the way it is. We are opposed to a groin because it would cause erosion down the beach or across the inlet. It would wash away all the habitat for the birds and we think the inlet should be left alone. When I and my family come here, we swim in the surf, we walk on the beach, we watch the birds, the wildlife, sometimes the turtles hatching, and this whole area would be washed away. This pretty dune area where I'm sitting wouldn't even be here after a few years with a jetty built. Nature's been taking care of it, and if mankind messes around with it, it can only be detrimental. Dr. Richard Bird is a recently retired breast cancer physician, a dedicated wildlife photographer, and a 30-year resident of Figure Eight Island. So over the period of 30 years that I've watched the north end of the island, I have observed, as many other people have observed, that the inlet kind of wags from side to side, and it does it very slowly over a period of years. But the overall position of the inlet has not changed. We have pictures from 100 years ago that shows that the position really hasn't changed. So what we have here is a stable inlet. Now there is a move afoot to alter this inlet by placing a hardened structure which would change the natural flow of the sand over the area and would actually eliminate much of the area that has been accreted over this period of time. And I have a real problem with this because I cannot understand the rationale for altering a stable inlet, probably the most stable inlet in North Carolina. Rich Inlet's wide beach, its large spit, and its tidal flats now protect the island, rendering the proposal to build a terminal groin at this inlet as unnecessary as it is expensive, an intrusive action that would destroy this natural system. 
last stand for such endangered species as the piping plover, the red knot, and other denizens of this very special place. Pricey Harrison has been a member of the General Assembly since 2005. She has been coming to Figure 8 Island for over 30 years and is intimately familiar with Rich Inlet. Well, my, my family had been coming to this island because it was just the prettiest island we thought on the, on the entire North Carolina coast. And it was just beautiful and you had these unspoiled areas and you had this diverse habitat, particularly at the northern end here at Rich Inlet. So when the proposal came up in the legislature when I got elected to the state house, we debated this issue and, and there was a proposal for a pilot project. So there were stipulations put in the legislation. And one of the stipulations was, is if the groin or jetty were showing downdrift erosion, it would have to come out. The homeowners would have to pay to take it out. So we know that the way this is gonna work is the groin is going to trap the sand, but it's gonna create downdrift erosion. And so the downdrift homeowners are gonna be upset, but you're also gonna have a requirement that it come out. So the homeowners are gonna pay to put in a really expensive jetty and they're gonna to have to pay to take that jetty out. And we're gonna lose a really wonderful resource in the process. Everyone loses. No small part of what makes Rich Inlet so special is that it is a public resource. It belongs to the people of North Carolina. Derb Carter of the Southern Environmental Law Center, recipient of North Carolina's Conservationist of the Year and National Wetlands Awards, puts it succinctly and clearly as to why the proposal to build this massive structure is simply not the way to go. My wife's parents have owned a house on the north end of the island for a long time. So my wife and I have been coming down here many years and have really watched the island grow and change in, in a lot of ways. Terminal groins have a history of unintended consequences. And one of those is, will be here almost certainly, uh, to eliminate the south side of Rich Inlet as we know it. Instead of having a broad, flat spit that the public can use, that uh, you can walk on, that you can fish from, during the summer wildlife can breed on, it's going to be replaced with a rock and sheep wall uh, that provides none of those benefits and uses that previously existed. Another unintended consequence is the purpose is to trap sand in a limited part of the north end of the island to protect a few residences that are periodically threatened by erosion. But trapping that sand means it does not go where it would normally go, uh, which would be down drift or the remainder of the island, which means to attempt to benefit a few residences, we may actually end up increasing erosion in front of other residences uh, on the island, uh, which is, would have to be responded to in some way, creating this cycle uh, that these terminal groins tend to lead to of increased measures to try to engineer and harden an inlet uh, because of these unintended consequences. Tracy Scrabel of the North Carolina Coastal Federation, a coastal scientist for 30 years, explains what can be done to stop this proposal. Other options do exist. So with regard to erosion, which we know is a natural process, there are a number of ways that we can mitigate that erosion and still maintain what we have as a natural ecosystem. Beach nourishment is um, not a permanent solution, but it is a method that we have available to us to uh, be able to continue to live along this coast and still maintain it as, in its natural system. Although it is also a process that, that must be repeated over time, it is far less expensive over time than this permanent structure, which is going to be excessively uh, expensive to not only construct, but to maintain. Please think about the images you've seen and the stories of people who know and love our coast. If you think the proposal to build a massive rock structure would harm the island, the inlet, and its wildlife, please take some time to seek the truth, to talk to experts in this case, and to help save Rich Inlet, this priceless natural resource, the future of which depends upon our voices and deserves our utmost care. When you eliminate the habitat that these birds depend on, you eliminate the birds. It's better if we get smart about how these inlets work 
and less greedy about using the land. Pay to put in a really expensive jetty and they're gonna have to pay to take that jetty out and we're gonna lose a really wonderful resource in the process. Everyone loses. Terminal groins have a history of unintended consequences. I think the inlet should be left alone. I cannot understand the rationale for altering a stable inlet.